Welcome to the game. Uh, here we've got a very interesting matchup for you tonight. Uh, in the west of the map we have Fred, who's uh, quite an experienced player. And in the east we have a player who's new to the game, Pro Randy. Uh, he's playing in red. And you might think that this game is very unbalanced, uh, but in fact, Randy is a very uh, good and experienced StarCraft player. Uh, one of the, the top StarCraft players. And so while he might be a bit new to 0k, this is only his second match. Um, he certainly has the, the skills from StarCraft to, uh, to understand the game and to play it effectively. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, we can see uh, Fred started with some some early scouting stroke raiding with these two darts. I see one of them's uh, going to find Randy's base right away. No, he's just going to sit outside there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Randy with a scorcher for defense there, and um, with his commander helping out. They've seen off this uh, early attack, but not before losing a few wind generators. So there are two wind generators down, that's not, not a big loss. Um, no more darts coming out immediately for, uh, for Fred. And he's got three scorchers queued up in his vehicle factory. Oh yes, I, I suppose I should mention both players are on vehicle factories. Uh, they're both going for some economy now the initial exchange of fire has happened. Uh, Fred sending one mason out to take pretty much the whole map full of mexes there. Um, well, Randy, on the other hand, has a uh, uh, much more subcomlex start really. He's got two more masons queued up. Uh, and he's got a, a line of wind generators, or a few lines rather, of wind generators there. Um, and he's now, in fact, just taken the lead economically. Um, oh, well, that was only reclaimed though, so. So both players are about even. Uh, Randy's commander not being used very effectively there. It's uh, assisting his factory, you know, which is a, a good thing to do, but your commander really can be used for so much more. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Uh, your commander can be used for so much more. He can he can go out and, and be the aggressive one taking the, the forward mixes. Um, but it's okay to leave him in your in your base uh, where he's nice and safe. Yeah, many games have been lost by people walking their commander out unprotected and, and getting caught by a surprise attack. So it's it's starting to hot up a bit. Uh, Fred spaced a few darts out in order to see where Randy's going. There, there and, and over here in the centre of the east side. Uh, the the spectators, if you're keeping an eye on the the chat in the corner there, uh, discussing the recent balance changes. Um, and uh, what units to use. Whether Scorchers are overpowered, which of course everybody says they are. Um, oh, and Fred's Mason there that had been sent up to take these northern points, getting uh, getting destroyed there by a, a lone Scorcher from Randy. And that's been a pretty effective use of a Scorcher, but he's going to get punished for it now, going in a bit too far. Well, in fact, he's actually going to be able to take out the one Scorcher, but the... Um, Second one coming in is going to head him off there. Though it's actually being nicely controlled there. It's managed to avoid being shot at by both of the Blue Scorchers at once. Which is always good. So in fact it's managed to uh, managed to escape there. Um, but now being penned in by some more. But look, it's keeping 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 Scorchers busy. With just one there. Um... Uh, they were the the main attack force of Fred lining up, ready to uh, ready to contest the centre. Uh, meanwhile, Randy playing 
pretty conventionally, which is uh, a good strategy for a, a new player. And I, I guess it's impressive that a new player can play conventionally and, and not miss stuff out. Um, is is little econ farm over in the corner here is is a bit undefended really. If uh, Fred were to do a, a switch to airplanes or gunships, that could be in real trouble in the north. But right now it's it's fine. He's finding these isolated darts that Fred's been leaving around, and uh, managing to uh, managing to take those out. However, Fred's army of scorchers, which is now looking a bit more respectable, uh, it's 11, uh, is coming up to check on, on these metal points and then to push in, they'll be able to take out this Lotus easily. If we look at the radar position here, we see Anakid, uh, sorry, Fred, I, I'm just saying Anakid because I've just seen his name in the chat on the on the right there. Um, Fred's got some, some good coverage at the centre there and can just see Randy's front lines as blobs there in his view. Whereas on the other side, there's a, a nice cheeky radar there gun up for Randy, uh, but he can only just see that outlying radar of Fred. Uh, see Randy here moving in the south to take this choke point, or rather to secure this choke point with a Lotus. Um, oh, uh, several Lotuses, perhaps overkill there and an extra radar. Um, but not the metal point, which is uh, what he really needs to take. Uh, however, Randy's actually doing really well economically. He's gone up to uh, 32 metal now, or 31 metal. Um, and if we look at that, he's got about 30% overdrive on those, uh, which is um, which is pretty respectable, uh, especially, uh, so that one's not built yet. Uh, yeah, a lot of threads are not connected to the grid, and 32 overdrive for the ones that are. Um, Randy's been very expansive on his side of the map, he's, he's done very well at coming out and taking taking these uh, reasonably safe expansion points um, because he can he can control this line here he's got a nice border um, whereas Fred's been a lot slower because of his uh, his mason that he sent north earlier because that was destroyed and there was that one red scorcher running around this area he's not been able to go north and he's just sending his masons up now um, and you know this area is relatively safe, but uh, in the same way, Randy can can go through here anytime he chooses. Whereas it's becoming harder and harder for Fred to get access through through this route uh, as the the Lotus Forest uh, grows. Uh, I suppose it is a sign of Randy's inexperience that he's going for this Lotus Forest, but it's, it's actually being pretty effective, and especially as he has this. Uh, this economic advantage, he can afford to do this to secure a line. Um, so we'll see how this turns out. It's working well for him so far, but uh, Fred's not really been attacking so far. Um, the spectators are uh, commenting on the fax switch going on here. Uh, so a phoenix coming up, well a second phoenix rather coming up for Fred. They're not attacking yet. Um, Though in a way the opportunity for that has passed, as there's a line of defenders protecting the front uh, of this fragile area which I commented on earlier. Um, but they could still they could still weaken the, the Lotus Forest quite significantly. So we'll see how that goes. And of course they can take out these this Scorcher Raiding Force. Wow, the dot really effectively managing to uh, to avoid getting hit by those scorches there, hiding in the trees. So not as effective as they could have been, but they've still done a lot of damage to all of these scorches. 
really weaken the line there ahead of uh, an attack. Frey coming forward with his Scorcher army. There's quite a lot of them now. So, um, metal points taken. So that was really... Oh, oh, uh, I, I missed Fred's commander there, uh, getting destroyed by an incursion from Randy. Uh, and so Randy really has the advantage now, he doesn't just have twice the economy, he still has his commander, and, uh, and Fred doesn't. What I was just thinking of that, that caused me to, to miss that, was I thought that actually the, um, the, the Phoenix assault from Fred was actually a weak opening. If you're surprising your enemy with a fax switch, you really want to go for, for a, what would normally be a difficult target, something right at the back of their base, like a, a factory or, uh, or the, these lines here. And Fred wasn't to know that Randy had... Uh, oh, it's gone very quiet suddenly with the background music there. Fred wasn't to know that Randy had uh, made a nice neat line of defenders there to protect that. Um, but even so, he could still have gone for the, the factory or for, uh, for Randy's commander. Um, yeah, so, so a bit of a weak first attack, I felt. But uh, it, he did take on a good target, and he has capitalised on that to, uh, to bring forward his Scorchers. Um, while Randy's under numbers, and of course, while Randy's had to switch to building some crashes as well. Um, he's built them now, he's got <laughs> nearly 200 more Scorchers queued up, and he might well build them all. Uh, meanwhile, Randy's not got any more planes, he's using an Avenger for scouting, um, and still building the Scorchers and Masons. So it's actually looking pretty bad for Randy now. He should be able to, to deal with this incursion, oh, and in fact he just has. Let me just uh, turn off the economy view so you can see that more clearly. Um, able to build up a, a relief force of Scorchers in time um, with the aid of the, the defenders in his base. He was able to, to finish Fred's Scorchers off. Um, but his, his economic advantage is, is contracted rather. He's now on 37 metal. He was on 45 before because he's lost a, a few mechs. If we turn back on the economy view, one, two, three, four, five mechs he's lost there in the center. Um, Anakid is commenting in the chat that Fred should have cleared Randy's south. And that might have been hard with all of these defenders in the south, but uh, these ones are isolated. A bit of scouting could have told him what was there. Um, so, uh, I don't think you can blame Fred for that really. He might have uh, might have thought that with a, a strong force of Scorchers and having sorry, and having wiped out the Red Scorchers, he'd be able to, to go all the way there, get a, a home run. But actually, he wasn't quite quick enough there. Um, so yeah, it, it, with hindsight, it would have been more effective to take the south. But uh, I think that was a, a reasonable strategy, given what Fred knew, and given the, the limited window of opportunity for scouting a, ahead of his main force there. Unit under attack. Uh, Randy going for that dart there, finally. Uh, and also taking the north. So he's going to reclaim his... Um, his economic advantage by making Fred's economy smaller, with a bit of a bit of revenge. Uh, Phoenix comes in here, you know, having trouble targeting the Scorchers, and the bombs come out, and it misses completely. Napalm not especially uh, effective against Scorchers because you can't set them on fire, and here the, the planes are just having trouble hitting them as well. Oh, you can set them on fire. Okay, I take that back, but it's still not been very effective as the planes haven't been hitting them. A uh, bit of friendly fire on the mechs there. Doing the Scorcher's job for them, really. Uh, so this one Scorcher runs away and hides. So Randy has done uh, an interesting strategy. He's spread out his, his Scorchers. Just the same way that Fred was spreading out his darts before. Um, 
keeping them there in reserve for next time uh, Mason comes out to take these mass points. Meanwhile, the big battle is going to go on on the center. Fred has a nice, neat line of scorchers, um, but having to, to close up that line in response to Randy's tightly, tightly packed army there. Scorchers uh, exchanging fire at, uh, at long distances. And they're spreading off, but it's Fred's forces who've been uh, who've been forced back there. And now it's Randy's who are in a, a nice neat line. And if we look economically, it's still 46, uh, 46 metal for Randy, so he's got up to, back to the position he was in before. Whereas Fred's now down to 80 metal income. Which, um... I think there's only one way this can go from now, unless Randy makes some kind of uh, some kind of schoolboy error. Um, if we look at Fred's forces, he's still not building any more planes. The planes, oh, he's he's got a leco now, but um, oh, he's making a nice nice dent in the line. But if we look at the speed that Randy's uh, bringing scorches to the front line, the leco's a, a, the leco bombs are a drop in the ocean. Really, he's not going to keep the numbers down. He's not going to. Re reduce the strength of Randy's force that way. Um, Fred also streaming uh, Scorchers to the front line, but oh, he's managed to, to let his Scorchers, uh, by trying to push forward a little, he's managed to let them get surrounded a bit, he's, he's managed to go through the line now, but now of course he's got nothing in between his base and Randy's Scorchers. Randy's been able to split his line in two there, got a, a small force chasing these ones as well as the ones that are freshly coming out of the factory uh, while also bringing some forward now there's a, a nice uh, a nice free path to the base not microing them that well you really should be bringing them closer to the Lotus because of course scorches uh, the the damage that the heat ray does falls off with distance so at the very limit of their range they're doing very little damage you want them right next to and to and in the face of the the thing they're trying to destroy so you can get maximum damage per second out of that heat ray and uh, Fred's now come around to attack uh, the the less defended side of uh, of Randy's uh, economic base or his second economic base been a very effective assault though um, having to go all the way round has, has weakened his force somewhat excuse me <coughs> so actually Fred's Fred's hitting back effectively but um, you know even even after this attack Randy's still on 45 metal um, with a, a bit of reclaim times as well and he's floating metal He's got, well, a fourth caretaker going, well, not going, yeah, fourth caretaker going up now. He's got three assisting his factory. He's got his commander standing there, not doing very much by the look of it. Um, and he's still floating metal. It's, he's, uh, he's being a bit of a, a one-trick pony here with just scorches, but uh, there's no need to change as that's being so effective. He's chasing after Fred's Scorchers to uh, to try and defend his economy as he's uh, he's still getting hit a lot by Fred. Fred's actually doing quite a good job of, of turning this game around, though it's uh, it's a bit too little, too late. Um, he's got his little pack of Scorchers there, and they are going around hitting stuff, um, generally making a nuisance of themselves. And um, and that's that's really the way he needs to be playing this game. But he needed to be playing this game uh, a bit sooner. They spent a lot of time lining up his forces uh, and just getting wiped out by Randy. Um, and of course, now with the economic disadvantage he's got, it's it's going to be very hard for him to to cement this comeback, um, especially since he's still not getting his masons out to, to take these metal points again. Though he is managing to do some reclaim as uh, there's a lot of Scorcher corpses near his base. Um, there is a lot of reclaim on the map, of course.
Those few bombers are, are still going out and doing a good job, but uh, yeah. And there's an air repair pad even to help them out, but there's uh, still uh, nothing going on at the airplane, airplane plant, and it's still a scorcher on scorcher battle. I do wonder what effect it would have at this point in the game if uh, one player uh, threw some some slashes into the mix. Um, they have been nerfed in the in the recent uh, huge balance change update. They're um, they're you know because everybody has been saying they're so overpowered. They've been slightly increased in cost and and slightly decreased in damage. Um, but even so, they can be very effective, and and it would be interesting to see what kind of what kind of effect they'd have on the, the game as it stands. So Rundy slowed down a bit. His um, his huge scorcher army has been uh, hurt very badly. And there's, there's not a lot there. Ah, and he's bringing out some levelers as well. That could be interesting. Levelers, levelers on scorchers. So if we look at his build queue, he's now. Um, he, oh, he's built a second factory in order to build a different kind of unit. That's that's very super in commander. That. Um, so he's got masons, a few levelers, and then 200 ravagers, and he's still got lots of scorchers. Uh, I wonder if he knows about the repeat command on factories. So these bombers are still making regular deliveries to the front line, and um, yeah, Randy hasn't been building any more AA, so he's not going to be able to take them down unless he does that, or unless they get too close to one of these defender nests. He's um, he's still building his lines of uh, line is well his lotus forest, but also defender forest across the map. Um, but again, he can afford to. He has the economy for that. But um, you know, all he's doing at this stage is uh, is drawing out the game, giving Fred uh, more of a chance to get back. Fred's economy is looking a lot healthier now. It's up to thirty. Um, he's he's managed to get his masons out. They're going into this relatively safe area in the north. But unless he can protect the the this area. Um, then as soon as Randy has a handful more Scorchers, um, his economy is going to, tap to dive again. So right at the moment, Fred is, is doing a much better job of getting his Scorchers into the right place and, uh, and attacking together it looks like Randy's trying to trying to get his uh, his levelers together and uh, make a sensible fighting force uh, and he's, he's given up trying to build scorches uh, trying to build levelers he's just building scorches now from both of his factories unit under attack. See, some, somebody's left a comment here about reclaiming all of this stuff. It's a few scorchers. But, uh, you know, Randy has 20 metal per second more than Fred. That reclaims, you know, fine where it is for now. Oh, and Fred's managed to stop spending there. I don't know what's going on. If we, uh, if we look at his build queues, he's only building Ravagers now, so he's given up on Scorchers. Ravagers not that great against Scorchers, because they have a slow-moving projectile. The Scorchers um, can dodge pretty well. Oh! Oh no, it was a crash. Sorry, I thought that was a slasher for a moment. Um, and, and as I said before, that would have been a very interesting development in the game.
Oh yeah, there's one hiding scorcher there. Appears to be stuck. Yeah, it can't get it can't get on any of these things or, or down. Unit under so it's stuck where it is. Um, oh well, it's only one scorcher. There have been so many in this game, it's not really worth worrying about the one. Still regular bombing run, so that one seems to be uh, struggling to find the target. Oh, it found some there. That was a, a, a good use of napalm, actually. So, Randy has some more scorchers and, and is advancing again. Um, the question is, can he get them all the way home? All he needs to do is get his scorchers over here. Um, there's nothing there to stop him blowing all of this stuff up and finishing the game. Um, he's playing a bit cautiously there. Normally we'd say, you know, yeah, you should you should go and, uh, and attack the stuff that's easy. But uh, the main en enemy of these Scorchers is being bombed. That's how they die. Um, so actually what he needs to do is get them to the base as quickly as possible. To minimise the number of, of bombing runs they're subject to. And he's still not doing that. He's playing very cautiously by taking these outlying things first. Um... Perhaps expecting the blue base to be well, to to be very defended. Um, wow, two fusion reactors, one right next to it and another. Not a very effective Lico there, only took out two units. So the Ravagers now starting to come in handy, now they're not attacking. Well, it was Fred Ravagers before that were attacking the Torches. Um, Whoa, that was uh, quite an effective Lico shot there. But the enemy is out of the gates. Now, it's time for them to just blow everything up. Uh, the problem is for, uh, for Fred that, that these units can't even be safely bombed anymore because they're too close to, to Fred's remaining buildings. Bombing them here is going to take out Fred's base just as surely as the uh, the units themselves will. So that was a good precision shot from the Lico. Only a, a tiny amount of damage to friendlies there. Though, um, that said, the air repair pad is going to go down. Yep. The, the Lico is hogging the, um, the airplane plants. Looks like the fusion reactors are about to blow, I was going to say. There they go. So this is not something that you want to see if you're a, a blue soldier getting up in the morning. There is just nothing left for Fred in this game. Oh, he has a radar. I don't know why he hasn't resigned really. The, you know, Zero K does have the tradition of resigning when you've clearly lost. There's still a Lico flying around, but um, doesn't have anywhere to, to rearm. Sorry, I've turned round there. Obviously trying to go for Randy's commander, but no, it took a target, picked a target and, um, and went down. So left in the game there is one bugged Scorcher. 
which is now coming in for attention. Uh, as well as this radar here, which is also coming in for some attention. And then the game really will be over. Uh, Fred stole the Scorch as a self-destruct. So, that was an interesting game. Thank you for watching.